You recently chatted about um, what you would have done if David Tennant had stayed in Doctor Who a year longer. Um, did you ever have any more ideas for Matt Smith's Doctor if he'd stayed in another series? Uh, well, actually, not really, because I knew much earlier. And in truth, uh, the uh, idea that I had for David Tennant was the Matt Smith idea adapted. Uh, because the reality was I thought it would be a new Doctor. David had his momentary wobble be before he went on to legendary status and other things. Uh, so I, I reworked it so it could be David, because I'd have kept him if I could. Uh, so, no, I knew more emphatically early on uh, that Matt wouldn't be staying. And I mean, it, it struck me that the, the thing of it starts with him regenerating, then goes back. You kind of did that in your second series, didn't you? Yes. I did. I mean, nothing is ever wasted. I reused the idea. I thought it was a cool idea. But the doctor you meet at the beginning of the series, you realize isn't the one uh, who's current. He's from, the, he's from episode 13. So I did want to reuse that. I thought it was a cool idea. I thought it was terrific. Like it was, it was, it was really interesting to think of it, how it would have gone with David as well. Yeah. Now it would have been. It would have worked. We'd have made it work. Absolutely. I mean, I was, I was pretty happy with where we ended up with uh, Matt Smith and Karen Gillan and Arthur Darvill. But you know, uh, frankly, as television has proven ever since, you can never have too much David Tennant. So. Yeah. A similar vein. I think there was a point when Jenna Coleman was going to leave in 2014, about a year before she did. Yeah. I mean, did you have plans for another companion at that point? Uh, vaguely. I vaguely had a, a set of thoughts about what the new companion should be like. Um, I, I didn't feel as though we were quite finished with Jenna and Clara. I, I mean, I wasn't, and I wasn't convinced looking in Jenna's eye that she was really ready to leave. And I don't think anyone should leave Doctor Who until they're really ready to leave. So it wasn't a massive surprise to me that she stayed. It was a bit of a surprise. I mean, we went to the Christmas read-through uh, last Christmas with her leaving at the end, and it was in the conversation after the read-through that she stayed. Uh, but, you know, if you've got a star like that, you keep a star like that. Of course you do. Of course you do. So would that companion who replaced her have been like Bill, or was it an entirely different uh, There would have been elements in common, but, you know, your, your mind moves on in the interim. Uh, so maybe a bit some of that but you know where we ended up with Bill has obscured what I was thinking about for uh, Clara's replacement or the original version of Clara's replacement so I, I couldn't really say now. Bill uh, ended up being very much her own thing I think and very much Pearl Mackey. Do you still find yourself the odd thing inspiring you or coming up with little ideas that would have previously worked as a Doctor Who episode or are you kind of curtailing that impulse? I thought of a really good monster the other day and realised we're never going to do it uh, so I suppose so a bit but I used to make up monsters all the time when I was a kid watching Doctor Who. So that's quite nice, knowing I came up with a Doctor Who monster and I don't have to have 12 million meetings about it. We just, it just stays in my head. I mean, I was quite um, sad to see the current or old Sardis get destroyed because it's one of my favorite sets. I mean, was it always going to be replaced or was there ever any chat of keeping it? Um, well, you know, I'm happy to stand back, stand back and let everybody else make the decisions now. I did the same thing ages ago. Uh, Doctor Who has to change radically all the time. Not because it's necessary, because it's fun. So that, fine. Um, at what point did Chris talk to you about the last scene in Twice Upon a Time? Because um, it's just struck me that it was a lot more action-packed than a lot of regenerations we've seen. Um, we talked quite early. I think he asked, that was actually the, the first bit of the script written. Uh, so he said this is where he wanted you know, Judy to begin, or the new Doctor to begin. So he sent me those pages and I worked the script up towards it. What advice um, did you give Chris Chibnall on his first day of a job, or would you? I gave him a lot of advice about very practical issues that's just between me and him. About how you live your life and how you deal with the pressure. Uh, but that's, that's into showrunner, and I hope he's taken it. I know he has. Was it roughly the same stuff Russell said to you seven years ago, eight years ago? It was pretty much the same stuff, yeah. I mean, the world has changed a little bit in terms of the multiple demands on your time, but... I mean, to be honest, Chris is an incredibly smart man, and he's sure run before. So most of the stuff I was telling him was granny sucking eggs and all that. But it's just saying, these are the things you need in place, and this is how you can live your life.